Greetings and salutations. What a beautiful day for a ball game. Let's play two. R5L4 was screeching in pain as he was getting attacked by the insect creatures that were destroying Kipteron's ship from the outside. A small explosion came from R5, then the screeching stopped and R5 was gone. Kip put on his life suit and ejected the canopy of his X-Wing, cutting it off with his lightsaber and setting a creature into space. Kip had a dead creature stuck in between the two wings of the X-Wing. He thought that even if he didn't make it out, someone would find the wreckage and study the creature. He made some repairs and barely flew the ship to the nearby planet of Serpendal, using the method of short hyperdrive bursts to maintain the integrity of the damaged ship. The chapter shifts to the Helska system, where Danny Kui is in a chamber alone, having not yet been tortured. Suddenly, two Yuzan Vong warriors dragged in another human, Miko Reglia, into the chamber. The warriors bragged to Danny that some of Danny's best warriors came to fight them, in reference to Kip's squad, and they were destroyed with ease. Dagar also came in the chamber and spoke fluent basic to Danny's surprise that he learned their language. Danny ran to Miko, who Dagar said would be sacrificed to the war coordinator. Miko mumbled something about rock like starfighters, then rested. He woke up and Danny said that they're on the fourth planet of the Helska system. She introduced herself to Miko, and Miko recognizes the planet she said she came from, Belkadin, in her ship, the Spacecaster, from the distress signal that they followed. Miko admits that they tracked the Spacecaster here with the squadron led by Jedi Knight Kip Duran and that he is also a Jedi. Danny's eyes widen with a flash of hope. Miko says he was trained by Luke Skywalker himself, and Danny thinks to herself that the Yuuzhan Vong are making a mistake by not thinking a Jedi Knight was worthy. Miko asks Danny if the Yuuzhan Vong are smugglers. Danny says they're extragalactic and that they're here for conquest. Miko reassures Danny that although they seem formidable, they won't stand a chance against the Star Destroyer. Danny replies not to underestimate them. Miko says that they must tell the New Republic of their new enemy and they begin planning their escape. Dagar calls Naminor and reports the recent battle with Kip Duran's squad and that he thinks none of the enemies could have survived, not knowing that Kip did. Dagar tells Nam of their new prisoner, a Jedi, and Nam warns Dagar to be careful with that one. They discuss the breaking a method to torture their prisoners mentally to learn how to exceed the limits of the Jedi. They both agree that Danny is more worthy and Nam questions why Kip's squad came to Helsk 4 in the first place, suggesting that their secrecy is blown. Dagar was hoping that it was just fate and copes by explaining that the second world ship will arrive that day and the third will come by the end of the week. The call ended and Dagar looks forward to the torture of the new prisoner Jedi, Miko Reglia. Meanwhile, Danny and Miko ambush three Yuuzhan Vong warriors guarding the chamber. During the fighting, Miko notes that he couldn't sense anything about the Yuuzhan Vong with the Force. Miko and Danny won the fight and they stole the cloaking creatures off the warriors and they went into the water tube. The two arrive in a large chamber with only one warrior, Dagara, who says that they don't need to wear their masks as the world ship produces its own atmosphere. It took you longer than I had anticipated, Dagara admits to the escapees. Miko and Danny tried to attack Dagara, but he threw a goo at them, and they both were soon captured and they could not move. Dagara taunted Miko and his unworthiness, then separated the two. Dagara brought Danny to the Yamask for the sacrificial ceremony. The war coordinator was communicating with its subordinates telepathically. Dagara delivers a speech of Prefect Mashride, the leader of the second world ship and its soon arrival. Suddenly, another tube came down and penetrated the bubble chamber the Yamask was in and the second world ship had arrived. Prefect Mashrai took her place next to Dagara and the ceremony went on for hours until Miko Reglia was put on a post in front of the Yamask. The Yamask pulled Miko in and Miko knew his fate, so he meditated thinking of how he wasn't afraid of death. Closer and closer, the mouth opened and closed, chewing before the meal arrived. Closer and closer.